Hi everyone! In this video I'd like to look at how you would solve for the pH of a weak base solution. Before we do an example, there are four things I want to make sure we're clear on. The first is that the concentration of the base that you initially put into the solution is going to be much, much greater than the concentration of hydroxide that is produced. The second thing then is that we're going to need to use an ice chart to solve for the equilibrium concentration of the hydroxide produced in the solution. The third thing is that we want to know how to solve for pOH, and that is going to be the negative log of the hydroxide concentration. Lastly, because we're solving for pH, it's important to understand the relationship between pH and pOH, which is the pH plus the pOH is equal to 14. So now let's take a look at the example. So let's take a look at our problem. It says, calculate the pH of a 0.30 molar solution of C2H5NH2 with a KB value given as well of 5.6 times 10 to the minus 4. As always, at the beginning of these kinds of questions, you want to pull out the important pieces of information. So over here, we know that we're going to be solving for the pH. So that's the question. The second thing we're told is the concentration of this particular substance. So now, in this case, we know we're dealing with a weak base solution, as this is what the video is about, but if you were on an exam situation or doing homework, the way you could tell is, you're given a KB value. KBs are related to bases, so if you're given one, then you know that the compound you're looking at is a base. Additionally, if we look at this compound, it is a neutral compound that contains an amine group in it. That's another clue that this would be a basic solution. So now remember then, what we have to do is figure out from the initial concentration how much hydroxide is produced. So to start that out, we're going to build our ice chart. So in our ice chart, the first thing we need is the reaction equation. So we have C2H5NH2 plus H2O. We know it's reacting with water because there's nothing else mentioned in the solution. We know that because this is weak, it's going to reach equilibrium. Now remember, this is a base, and bases are the acceptors of the proton. So that means the water's acting as the acid. So what we're going to form then is that this is going to take an H from that water, and the H adds on to the N. So we have C2H5NH3, and remember, it's adding an H+, plus, so that's going to give us a plus charge on the compound. And then over here, the water lost the proton, so we'd have minus OH. So that's the reaction that's happening in our solution. The next thing we do is build out the I, C, and E, where I stands for initial concentration, C is for the change in concentration, and E is the equilibrium concentration. So now remember in these cases, when we're talking about equilibrium and K values, when we're dealing with liquids or solids, they are not part of the calculation, which means we don't actually care about anything related to water in these ice charts. Then we think, okay, initially, the only thing that's initially put into the solution is this substance here. So we put in a value of 0.30 molar. And these at the very beginning haven't actually formed yet, so we're going to have none of those. The next thing we do is look at C for change. So the first thing we have to think about is when this is equilibrium, this can shift in the forward or the reverse direction. So we have to figure out, well, which direction is it going in this case? Because we don't have anything on this side, we can't move in the reverse direction, we have to go forward. So that means I'm going to be using up some of this, and I'm going to be adding hydroxide and the conjugate acid. But then you think by how much. So what we're going to do is we know they're going to change by x amount, and then we look at the coefficient. Because the coefficient here is 1, we're only going to change by 1x amount. We also have coefficients of 1 and 1 here, so that we're going to change by x amount here and x amount here as well. Now for the equilibrium row, all we have to do is add it up. So at equilibrium, we would have 0.30 minus the x that was used up. We would have x amount here and x amount here. Let's take a look at the next step. So here we see what we had from that equilibrium row. So we've got our reaction up top, and then we found from the ice chart we did that the concentration is 0.3 minus x for this substance. We don't care about water because it's a liquid. We have our conjugate acid at x and our hydroxide formation at x as well. So what we need to do then is solve for x. So the way we're going to do that is by using the KB expression. So the first thing that we want to do is set up the expression for KB. So we have KB which is the concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants. 
So the products are concentration of C2H5 NH3 plus times the concentration of hydroxide. Those are both of my products here. Divided by the concentration of C2H5 NH2. So I'm not putting water in here because water, once again, is a liquid, and there's no point in these equilibrium expressions that we're going to care about putting it into any of our equations. So then what we can do then is we know all of these values, because these are all the values at equilibrium which we have in this row. So we can rewrite this as Kb is equal to the concentration is x times x divided by this one's concentration, 0 0.30 minus x. And from the very beginning of the equation, we were told what this one's value was, which was 5.6 times 10 to the minus 4. So now we're set up to solve for x. Okay, so here is our KB expression, and in here we've plugged in the concentrations at equilibrium for each of the species in the solution. And then here is our KB value given to us at the very beginning of the question. So our goal here is to solve for the value of x. Now there are two ways that we could go about doing that. The first one is to multiply the whole thing out. This would wind up being a quadratic, and then we can use the quadratic formula to solve for x. A lot of times we'll wind up using the alternate method, and the alternate method is used because it's more efficient. So what we're going to do is, if you see that you have a k value that is very small, remember that this would be 0 0.00056. So it's quite a small number. And what that means is that this reaction isn't going to actually form very much product. There's very little hydroxide formed, very little of the reactant used up. What that means to us then is that the initial concentration that we started out with is going to be pretty much equal to what the equilibrium concentration will be, because this value will be so small. So what we're going to do then is rewrite this. So if we look at the numerator, this would wind up being x squared. And now we're going to divide by just 0 0.30, because we're saying that these two are pretty much equal to one another. So when we do this calculation here, we saw when we get x is equal to 0 0.013 molar. So this is what our hydroxide calculation is going to estimate the hydroxide concentration is. Now, there's one thing. When you make this assumption, sometimes it's okay to and sometimes it's not. So you'll need to validate that assumption. And the way that we validate it is by doing the 5% rule. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so the 5% rule. So what it's going to do is it's going to help to either validate or refute the way that we solved the problem in the previous step by assuming that the x value relative to the initial concentration was small. So what we're looking for is that the x value is less than 5% of the initial concentration. So what we're going to do over here then is make a fraction between these two. So what we have is x is 0 0.013 molar and we're going to divide that by the initial concentration we were given which is 0 0.30 molar. And then to make it a percent we'll multiply by 100. So here we get a value of 4.3%. So now this value is close to 5%, but it is still less than it. So here all we're looking for is that that is less than 5%, which it is. That tells us that it is okay we made the assumption and we can go ahead and use that concentration for our final calculation. Okay, so we've made it to the final step of our calculation. So remember, what we had to do was recognize that we had a weak base. When we recognize we have a weak base, we understand we need to do an ice chart calculation to determine the concentration of hydroxide formed. In our calculation, we had to make the small x assumption because it made our calculation easier. We double checked using the 5% rule that it was okay that we did make that assumption and we found that it was. So now we're confident in saying the concentration of hydroxide at equilibrium is 0.013 molar. We don't care about the concentration really of anything else because we really are just looking for the pH. So now remember, the question asked about pH, but we've got hydroxide. So what that means is we can first solve for our pOH, which would be the negative log of the concentration of hydroxide, which we found to be 0.013 molar. When you solve for this, you get a value of 1.89. So now remember, with regard to pOH, this makes sense because for pOH, a pOH value less than 7 means that we have a basic solution. 
So the final thing will be, though, we need pH. And we remember that the relationship is pH plus pOH is equal to 14. So my pH would then be 14 minus 1.89, which gives me 12.11. So this here would be my answer, and it makes sense because it is greater than 7, and the pH greater than 7 indicates a basic solution. So those would be the basic steps that you would take to figure out the pH of a weak base solution.